everyone. Welcome to my podcast, to my channel rather. I'm trying not to call it podcast. I'm trying to call it a channel. <laughs> oh, so this is January, let me think about it, the 12th. It's January 12th, Saturday. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yes, January 12th. It's Saturday. The light is so pretty right now. It's 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 semi sunny out, mm, kind of cloudy, kind of sunny. But I just thought it was. I looked over in this craft corner of my living room and thought, gotta record because it looks really awesome over here. Plus, I have made progress on this piece. So wait, let me first tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Rocane pullover. It's a really slouchy, sloppy looking pullover um yeah I'll, I'll put it in my show notes if you want to check out my project page i've talked about it numerous numerous times so um if you're a new viewer and you haven't seen my past podcasts or my po past episodes um yeah you can check it out down there and uh, usually on my project page i've been trying to write which episodes that I've talked about the piece in so that people can easily um, go directly to those episodes and uh, and find info if they are interested. Um, I um, Last time I podcast it was New Year's Day and I talked about my Make 9, um, which I'm going to update you on. But... I hadn't really, I don't really do New Year's resolutions. I know some people do, but I haven't done them since I was a young adult. And what I did want to do though, which I found, um, like I find an interesting practice is come up with sort of a word or, or a concept to focus on for at least the first night or the next few months. So there's been something brewing in my life, like in my own self-awareness um that i've it's like self-knowledge i guess or self-awareness is probably the right word for it but like com becoming aware like i think one of the luxuries of being an older adult <laughs> and having empty nest having your kids be gone like being in this life stage that i'm in is that it gives you time to slow down and to pause and to be a little introspective and I don't want to turn it into like belly button gazing what um the uh oh my gosh the term went right out of my head the boomer generation it's known for I don't want it to turn it into that but I'm not really talking about that I'm talking about just this general like awareness of who who I have become so because I think when you're raising kids your life feels so fast-paced like it's just one thing after another that um, you don't really have a lot of time to be introspective and unless you carve that out by like doing a retreat weekend or something like that whether it's like a yoga retreat or a meditation retreat or knitting retreat or something like unless you carve out that time for yourself I think it's really difficult to make time when you're raising kids to be um, introspective and self-aware and to to actually work on yourself so I was thinking about this idea of sitting with things um, because I I'm the type of person that if something isn't to my liking or if something isn't if something doesn't feel right I want to roll up my sleeves jump in there and change it don't worry you did come for a knitting <laughs> you came for knitting content and I will have knitting content I promise lots of it um, but I just want to talk about this for a sec I I have been this past like I would say about three months of last year, three months of the last, th like so October, November, December of 2018, I became aware of the way that I do that, the way that I jump right in. If something doesn't feel right, I jump right in and try to fix it. But that's not always the right thing to do, to jump right in and fix it. Sometimes sitting with something and being aware of your process is super important. It's a part of, sometimes jumping in and trying to fix things can make things worse, it turns out. <laughs> so 
I have been trying to sit with my uncomfortableness or my awkwardness or my this isn't going the way I want it to exactly-ness. <laughs> Wait, I wrote a card. My awareness of myself, of my processes, and of failure. Awareness. Awareness of these things. I think, I think that's important. I... I think it's an important part of becoming, of becoming who I am or who I'm meant to be. Um, because I have to be honest, like some things aren't going my way. Like I don't think that things always go my way, but some things like, I mean, I'm well established in my career, so I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about more about my knitting stuff. Like not, not, the actual process of knitting because that I'm super comfortable with. Look how good this looks. I love it. Um, I'm talking about like my design processes and um, growth, like social media. And I am very new to social media. Like I know it's been around a long time and I, pro I put a toe in with Facebook when my sons were younger and started to get on Facebook themselves. and. Um, but it's a new frontier, right? I mean, it's, it's sure, yes, there's some things out there about it, but it generally speaking, it hasn't been around that long, 2010 or 2000, maybe a decade. That's not very long. It's not long enough for a lot of research to have been done to, for us to fully understand what social media is doing. I think we're getting there. But how to use it to my advantage, I just, I, I don't really know. Like, I, I don't know. Thinking all about, thinking about these things. <laughs> thinking about awareness of process of self and of failure, of fails. Failure, because I think inside failure, there's always some silver lining. There's always some, there's opportunity. In failure, there's opportunity. I always, I strongly, firmly believe that. Um, and so I'm trying to sit with the failures to look for the opportunity and to allow the opportunity to lead me instead of me leading the failure into what I think might be a success. I hope that made sense. And I didn't mean to get deeply philosophical, but it's just some things that I've been thinking about, like things for myself and just kind of like being open to possibilities and opportunities and just seeing what types of things come my way naturally without me driving yeah okay <laughs> with that um i don't have any fo's this week um this is a podcast about knitting and about yarn and about yarn collecting and about yarn planning and knit planning and all these things that i love um to spend time on and um sometimes would prefer to spend time on to the exclusion of a lot of other things um I'm sort of a lone knitter, I've realized too, which is part of my awareness of self. Um, I There's a local yarn shop, I showed it on my first day of Vlogmas, um, down, down the road from me. It's not too far, I could probably even walk to it pretty easily. It would probably take me uh, about 45 minutes to walk to it, but it's not that far. It's probably a two to five minute drive, depending on traffic. And I love the owner. She's adorable. Um, she probably, hi, Nancy, if you're watching. I don't know if you're watching or not. But she's a lovely woman, and I. she runs a knit group every Wednesday, and I don't know why. I, I Maybe I just, I don't know why. I I don't, I don't feel, I'm not, I'm feeling challenged with motivating myself to go to see the knit group and to, and to talk with people and, I don't know, it's still a lot of like, why, asking myself why, 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 why don't I want to do that? I know I would benefit and she tells, she tells me that I would benefit, so it's cool. 
I know I would benefit. I will. I'll come. I'll come soon. I don't know what... Maybe it's just this stage that I'm in. I don't know. Yeah. So let me talk about my knitting from, from the past couple weeks. I have been uh, focused almost exclusively on two works in progress. And um, if you could see the pile of progress bags. So what I did last time, so let me just tell you what I did, take you through what I did from my last episode. So my last make nine, I had spent the couple days leading into make nine swatching, doing a lot of swatching and a lot of caking of yarn and thinking a lot about make nine and trying to make my make nine make sense with the stash I already had because I, this idea of like sort of a stash down, I want to, I don't really want a huge yarn collection. I don't really enjoy, it gives me anxiety to see all this yarn hanging out and me not using it. I want to use my stash and I want to make intentional purpose purchases. I think that's important um, for me. It's important for me. You might have a different philosophy and way that you operate and that's cool. I just thought I, you might, some people may benefit from just hearing the way that I prefer to operate. Um, so I really want to use my stash and in my make nine, in developing my make nine, I didn't have any, um, I really, I was using some stash that I had, but I have a whole bunch. can't see it because it's really behind me here. Um, i to pull out one bag. I have a whole bunch of bags of um, indie dyed fingering weight yarns, all different types, all different bases, a lot of single ply. That honestly, like if I don't make tracks on using some of this, I'm gonna put it up for sale. I'm gonna de-stash that way. I really think I would be happier if I could de-stash. I'm, I probably, what I probably should do, and I, and I'm not gonna do it now, I'm not gonna do it this, this month, um, but maybe like later on in the springtime. I think what I'm gonna do is go through my, my indie dyed fingering weight stash, and this is just one of like, I don't know, 30 bags. I probably have about 200 skeins of yarn of this, of this indie dyed fingering weight. Gorgeous, gorgeous, I love every skein. But it kind of makes me, viscerally nauseous <laughs> seeing it all sit here and me not having any plans for it. I want to make plans for it. And part of it is because I think part of the reason I'm not using it is because I have a lot of single skeins and I have a lot of like double two skeins. And that requires comboing the projects. And I think when I first started to develop this stash in 2016, 16 to 17, I was thinking that I was, I, I had newly discovered Stephen West and I was thinking I would make a lot of like, I loved his aesthetic and I thought, oh, I'm going to make a lot of these shawls. Like, let me collect some different skeins. And I joined a bunch of um, uh, indie dyers clubs and yarn clubs and stuff like that and got mystery skeins because I thought that was fun and it was awesome. I enjoyed it, but now I have a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not using and I don't enjoy that. Don't enjoy that. I want some, but I don't need this much. I have too much. I have too much. But I did, with my Make 9, I did work on my stash. And I want to talk more about that after I do my what I, my whips, my works in progress. So this is the work in progress that I have made, pr the, that is, that I have um, knitted on the most because uh, about middle of this week, I realized that I really want to wear it to Vogue Knitting Live, which is coming up in two weeks, exactly. So I'm, you can see I am completely done with the body. These um, stitch markers here are marking where the buttons are going to go. So I have, I shared these buttons on, um, 
Instagram, but I didn't haven't shared them yet on the podcast, so I want to show you those. Um, but let me first tell you about the pattern. This is a pattern that I sold to, um, I designed and sold to Long Island Yarn and Farm, and it is making its debut at Vogue Knitting Live. Um, at Vogue Knitting Live on Saturday, I think in the afternoon, I, I think I asked for her to position me sometime in the afternoon, I will be a featured designer in the Long Island Yarn and Farm booth. So if you are watching and you will be at Vogue Knitting Live, please come say hi and tell me you're a viewer and I will um, happily chat with you about whatever is on your mind. Um, and yeah, so I took this pattern. I, I always like to re-knit. I like to re-knit my own patterns. I um, I don't know why. It's just something I enjoy. I enjoy re-knitting them. Um, so I had I had wanted to re-knit this pattern. I wasn't sure what I was going to use. I thought I might use Long Island Yarn and Farm Yarns. Oh, by the way, she has a lot of really cool new colors coming out. I'm going to put a picture on screen that she posted on Instagram. Super excited to see them. I may have to do some purchasing of her of uh, some of her new colors, especially the blue ones, the like blues and grays. I'm really, really, really loving those. Um, but anyway, so I decided that uh, I really wanted to not wear, I'm not gonna wear this on Saturday. This is gonna be my Friday sweater. My Saturday sweater is my other work in progress in my bag. Um, this, I did change this slightly. I am knitting this for the Christy Glass Clinton Hill birthday cowl that she's doing. So this is, I'm using Clinton Hill Bespoke DK Cashmere, 100% Cashmere. Come on, baby. There we go. Um, I'm using the color Onyx and uh, that's the black. And then this beigey color. It looks white, but it's actually, um, it matches the walls. It's the color of the wall behind me, you can see. It's called Light Sand. Um, and this is the DK base. Uh, yeah, I just have to do the sleeves and it'll be done. And sew the buttons on. Block it, sew the buttons on. Done. This is in the bag for Vogue Netting Live. No problem. I will probably, I, it takes me about two evenings after work, post work, to um, do sleeves. And this is only Saturday. So I... I don't think I'll get a sleeve done tonight, um, but I, because I actually have a lot of work to do. I've got some prep. Um, my semester starts the um, Tuesday after Martin Luther King Day. We're closed Martin Luther King Day, um, and we're not closed very often, so it's really, I really love that that's one of the days we're closed, because I love diversity and multiculturalism and all of those. I just love it. It's really my thing. Um... What was I going to say? Yeah, so I have prep to do for my classes, so I've got to get that done. I told myself I would do that after I podcast and got, got the podcast editing edited. It does not take me long to edit. It really, I was worried. If you're, ever, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, um, I don't find it takes me that long to edit, and I use iMovie if you're wondering what I use to um, edit. I have a MacBook Pro, um, and uh, yeah, it is a, um, it, it, I enjoy it. I actually enjoy editing and all of that jazz. So um, back to my work in progress. Let me show you the buttons because I um, shared my button collection in the past. Oh no, where are they? Um, so I shared my button collection. I don't even really remember where I originally got it from. Some of it I've added to it, of course, but um, I haven't added much, but I have a big, big collection of antique buttons that are from, I would guess the turn of the century or so, because there's a lot of jet buttons in there. Like but jet is a like kind of material that is made from, um, real jet is made from, bog wood actually so wood that they find in bogs that has gone through chemical processes of like hanging out in the blog and I mean in the bog and it turns black so they can make it out of um of course a lot of jet buttons are made out of out of plastic but if you buy jet these days and it's monitored it's going to be plastic but antique jet is actually made out of this boggy material this bog wood material that acts a lot like shell almost um, so anyway, I have a massive jet button collection that I found or I purchased um, 
or maybe my mother found it. It's in this old cigar box that I had shown on a previous podcast. And um, anyway, I found, I dug through, I always dig through this button collection first. And it has more than just jet buttons. It also has some really cool, beautiful metal buttons and Marcus I buttons. The person who had this collection must have been collecting buttons from, I would say around 19, late 1800s, 1900s, up through the 1930s, maybe even into the 50s a bit. So it's probably a collection that went from mother to daughter to granddaughter and somehow I ended up with it. I It's not my family's. I got it either at an auction, because upstate New York, if you're not familiar, is um, auction territory. There's a lot of like household auctions all the time, um, and you can find a lot of really cool things. Like I got a rope bed at one of these. It's down in the basement um, being stored right now, because it's just, it needs some repair work, and so I, I can't use it. But I'm planning to use it when I, when I purchase my next home. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'll get it repaired and it'll be, it'll be in one of the guest rooms. But I, um, I don't know where I got this. I either got it at a garage sale or I got it at an auction in upstate New York. I definitely got it in upstate New York because I got it. I think my mother picked it up or I picked it up and it is, um, I got it in my early twenties. So I have added to it as well. I've added a few things to it. Um, I shopped at Tinder Buttons quite a lot, which is a really, really awesome, old, been there for decades, um, button shop in New York City. It's in the 60s on the east side. Really, really worth, worth a trip, especially. So if you're coming into New York for Vogue Netting Live, make time to go to Tinder Buttons if you're interested in shopping for buttons. It will blow your mind. You've got to, you've got to save at least an hour or two to be there and take your swatches so you can figure out what works. Um, it will blow your mind, that shop. It's amazing. Amazing. I learned about it from my first design job. Um, my first design job was when I was 20 years old and it was 1985. Um, and I was working for Joan Vass, and uh, she, I ran all over the city for that woman. I learned all about the garment industry, the, the high-end garment industry. That was a very high-end knitter, knit maker, knit wear maker that I worked for. Um, but I learned about the industry um, because she sent me everywhere. She had no, there was no holds barred. I even ran and got her lunch. <laughs> I was 20, right? It was my first job and I made minimum wage. And uh, yeah, it was it was very, very interesting. I learned about mangoes from her. I learned about Gourmet Magazine from her. She was, it was an education. I got an education in that job. <laughs> I was there a year and that was an education. I met so many celebrities and they just right over my head. Joel Gray, I met Harry Belafonte, but the Belafonte family, the sons, the daughter, yeah. yeah. So many famous people. Uh, I think I said before, I sewed pants for um, the producer of a chorus line. His name is Martin or Marvin. I don't remember. I met him. I sewed pants for him. <laughs> Out of gorgeous fabric. I learned about Liberty of London fabrics there too. Um, I was a really naive young lady. It was fun. It was a good time. Looking back, I'm like, wow. What a cool place. I learned so much. And she told she was a cool person. She was a curator of the Met before she started to do knitwear. Very, 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 very interesting lady. I digress. <laughs> I was going to tell you about some new podcasts, and one of them is very much a stream of consciousness. And I was thinking, like, I'm not that way at all. I'm, like, very, you know, all business. Like, let me show you my knitting. Let me show you my acquisitions. Okay, bye. Um, no stream of consciousness. So the, sorry, this is going to be stream of consciousness. This isn't a normal episode, though. I am usually all business, <laughs> all about the knitting, trying to keep the uh, the podcast down to about 40 minutes. Um, but today, no. Sorry. Second work in progress. Second, My second work in progress is... 
Oh, stopped in the middle of the row. What? That's uh, unfortunate because it will be harder to show you. But um, okay. My second work in progress is also a design of my own, and it is my Fun Mary driving cardigan that I am making out of Jill Draper Make Stuff Kingston. It's her new newest yarn. Um, what you're seeing there in the gold is pockets. So this is what I've got done so far. This is the front, it's a cardigan. Um, the original pattern was written for um, a belt and I decided that this one I wanted to have buttons. Um, and yeah, I uh, next time this will be on, Mary, on uh, Martha. Fun Mary. Um, so yeah, this is a, I am almost up to the armpit. At one point as I was knitting, I was thinking this has a really cool fun, uh, not uh, words. Um, this has a really cool back waist detail, which uh, you're seeing right there. It In blocking, this should open up, but I actually really like that it's puckering and making more of a waist back waist accent so this will fall like right on the small of the back like right use use martha as a prop it'll fall right here on the on the body and no wait i don't want to lose stitches just too much too problematic to pick up again especially those twists those that rick rack ribbing so yeah it should it should pretty much be like right there on the back. This is a little bit longer, certainly longer than the one that Martha's wearing right now. Um, this this uh, cardigan is a crop cardigan. Um, I didn't actually finish talking about the mods. In the original design, you end with the contrast color down here, but I didn't really want white. I didn't want a white waistband or a light colored waistband. Um, in the original design, the the um, background is a light color and the contrast color is a darker color so I ended with the ribbing darker colored ribbing down here it would look just fine though with the as you can see the way that I did it here with the main color um, I was dealing with when I designed the original design I was dealing with the yarn management issue I was really trying hard to keep the yield down and to make it match um, a certain number of skeins that I was told by Tabitha of Long Island Yarn and Farm that it was important that I stay down that um, below for her customers because she knows what her customers usually will spend or willing to spend. Yeah, so anyway, this is my fun Mary. And as I said, I am in the, I'm just about to the armpit. I'm probably just right below. I'm probably about right mid bust line. Um, I probably have another, actually, I don't, I think I only have another four or five rows. I'm just thinking about the pattern, the way it's written. I think I only have another four or five rows before I split the front and back. So, um, this is a, Fun Mary is a bottom up knit. This is a top down knit. Fun Mary is a bottom up knit though. And so what happens is that you, you split for the sleeve, for the armhole, and then knit the back in one piece, knit, knit each front separately. Um, it also has a shawl collar, which I'll, I'll show a picture. I've probably already done it of what this um, sweater looks like. I originally knitted out of a indie dyed um, superwash DK weight and uh, going to Jill Draper make stuff. Her gorgeous, gorgeous yarn, um, which is this is it looks purple, right? But up close, you can see all those beautiful speckles. Look at the Marley. Red, yellow, and blue. Um, as I've said many, many times, Jill Draper just uses red, yellow, and blue dyes to dye. She doesn't um, mix the dyes into uh, colors. She always uses primary colors to make her colors, if that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, I am hoping to get this done so I can wear this on Saturday. Um, and uh, yeah. I want to, I don't know, is this kind of boring, like hearing about my designs? I hope not. I hope not. Um, I'm also thinking about, I think I will actually, I'll probably start it um, 
uh, tomorrow or Monday, maybe Monday. No, sorry, next weekend, I'm going to put all my patterns on sale. So if you've been eyeing the patterns, um, any of my patterns, I'm going to uh, get put a significant sale on it to, you know, in celebration of Vogue Knitting Live. And, to, you know, help people if they're at Vogue Knitting Live and they're trying to figure out what it is they want to um, make with their yarn purchases, their, you know, extra incentive to make some of my designs. So those two sweaters have been occupying me um, almost exclusively. Yes, uh, no, exclusively, <laughs> just those two sweaters. Um, so, and I understand Christy Glass was talking about um, her Clinton Hill cashmere uh, sweater and she was she she called me out for being uh, looks like I'm gonna be the first one done with a, a, a sweater from the Cal um, and she was, had said she really wants hers to last and I thought about making mine last as well but then it, I started to get this idea that I really really wanted to have it done I also can see now that I'm going to have extra yarn so um, and that yarn this Clinton Hill cashmere yarn is 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 not for the faint-hearted um, when it comes to purchasing it's really expensive it's almost fifty dollars a skein five zero a skein and i think i'm gonna have two extra skeins so that's a hundred dollars worth of yarn so i may buy a little bit i'm gonna think about what i want to make out of that i could easily do a hat maybe a, a color work hat to match the sweater but i would never wear them together but it would just be kind of cute um or i might make a wrap I, I may just pick up like maybe a third color and make a wrap. I don't know. I, I'm going to investigate some patterns ahead of um, going to Vogue. So what else did I do with my time? I did, I made a couple other purchases with the idea of make nine. Oh, by the way, this is my first make nine. This is one of my, this is in my, this was in my make nine. It was right in the center. Um, and uh, yeah, almost done. Nine garments, my make nine was my nine garments, and nine garments, I can make nine garments probably by, I'll be done by June, by, you know, if, if I stick, stay on path, I don't know if I'm going to stay on path, I'm not making myself stay on path, it just gave me something to focus on, um, and, and if you remember, if you watched my make nine, you remember I talked about this yarn here, this gorgeous O wool, um, fingering weight. It's her O wash. It's looking a little there. That's the right color. That, not that. It looks a little green. Um, this warmer color is closer to what the actual color is. It actually has a lot more red in it than you're seeing on screen. Um, maybe if I pull it back. Yeah, anyway. So I was thinking a lot about, I knew that Isabel Kramer was coming out with a new sweater. She, I think it's called Chauncey, if I'm pronouncing, uh, pronouncing it pronouncing it correctly. Um, this Chauncey yarn, or sweater design, top-down um, colorwork yoke. And I was pleased to see that it was a fingering weight, and I immediately thought of this yarn, because this, out of all the yarn, sweater quantities of yarn that I have stashed, I... This was the only one that I couldn't figure out what to do. I had talked about wanting to make the Sinister Cadigan out of this, and I do want to do a Sinister Cadigan. Oh, that reminds me. Undercover Otter had an amazing, amazing Sinister Cadigan. It was really bright colors, which I don't know if that's me, but oh my gosh, I would love to knit something like that. So I have to think about, I want to, I will do a knit Cadigan at some point, a Sinister cat again at some point i just don't know when what yarn I'm hoping to use some of the my stash over here my indie dyed yarns um problem is like most of my indie dyed yarns are highly speckled and uh i think you can use a highly speckled yarn on the top but then the cats should be tonal as well as the base i don't know I, something to think about um so that sweater came out and I immediately started to think about what would I use for the color work section? What would go with gold? What, what did I want to do? I could certainly do um, a really beautiful gray or I could use the yarns, the Liverpool wools that I had, Shetland wools that I thought about or, or had talked about. I could use white even. I was thinking white. But I, I saw someone's 
project where they had used something that was sort of rainbow-ish. And I thought, I don't really think it was true rainbow, but it gave me the idea of doing a rainbow skein. So I thought about my spin cycle yarns and I really wanted to maybe use some of those spin cycle yarns. Cause I have four, I bought four skeins of spin cycle dyed in the wool at Indie Untangled. So I thought it might be cool to use them. So I was looking at them and I was thinking, nah, nah, you know, I don't know if any of these colors really go. I don't really, they go with the gold, but I don't know if I like them with the gold. So I was thinking about getting something that was a little more neutral or maybe a little more rainy, rainbow-y. And I found a gorgeous skein online. Wait a minute, I have to just think about it that look to be primarily gray. This is, I'm now gonna give you a lesson in spin cycle yarn. <laughs> the magic of spin cycle yarn. Um, I found one that looked really gray online on at Yarn Scout, um, which is a, I think they're in Montana, an online uh, a store, a physical store in Montana, but they have a, a a nice online presence as well and I have bought from them from them in the past and they do a reward system and stuff super fast delivery I'm in New Jersey super fast delivery and uh, anyway I purchased this what I thought was kind of a gray with rainbowy tonals in it and what arrived was a yarn that looked like the blue sweater that I'm wearing um, it was looked it had maybe a little more royal blue, a lot of royal blue and teal in it. The name of the color was called Truth Bomb. And so then when I went, I was like, ah, bummer, it's blues. I don't know how I'm gonna like that with this. Like, I do think blue and gold go well together, but is that what I was looking for? I really kind of wanted these gray marled tones. Um, it wasn't really what I wanted. So I went to my spin cycle yarns and I took a look at them and turns out I had another skein that was also called truth bomb. Um, and it was just kind of a lighter version of this. It looked to me from the outside of the skein, like it was a lighter version. I'm going to put a picture of what it looked like on screen right now. Cause I photographed it. I did not photograph the second skein. That was the same color that I'm gonna, about to show you. But so I decided that, you know, I remembered the Dream State Pussy Willow color and how it made a beautiful gradient. Um, you can see that on my in on my Ravelry pages. It made a gorgeous gradient, and I thought maybe I should just cake this yarn and decide what I want to do. So I took my original Truth Bomb and I caked it. So you've seen what that skein looked like. This is what it caked up as. It's a rainbow, guys. Look at that. So I cake the other one, the second skein. So I was thinking, there's just no way these two are related, but you can really see they're not that far off actually. Um, the, I mean, the way the rainbow is laying out is different. This one, the my original one, the one I bought in Indian Tangled is a little paler, but generally speaking, these are the same color. The blue I was seeing is inside, and I thought about maybe re-skeining. See that that royal blue, those blues? Those were what were on the outside of the skein that, that I bought. Gosh, my camera's just not focusing. It's all about the back. Maybe that's better for you to see. So that was what I was seeing, but it actually makes a beautiful rainbow gradient, and I think I like that idea of rainbowing with this and there's I think the color in there isn't that close there we go now you can really see it and you see one of my hairs um there's a little section inside like in here that's pretty close to this but I think it'll be okay I actually don't mind that a small section will end up looking um similar to my base color so that's my plan with that so now I've made 10 <laughs> and then what I did Oh, I bought another skein too called Ruination. And it, to me on screen, it looked like a deep purpley black. So that's another spin cycle yarn, Ruination. But caked, you get the same sort of gradient. So here's the magic. Here's the magic of spin cycle yarns. They all do these radiants. You, maybe you knew. I didn't know. Oh, 
I, I decided that all of them needed to be caked now. So I caked all the ones that I got at Indie Untangled. This one's blues, shades of blue. Maybe you can see better there. So it's like basically going back and forth between two shades of blue. This is called Tangled Up in Blue. Um, oh, this is called Stay Out of the Woods. So you know, now that I'm thinking about it, when I bought this skein, I thought I was buying a really rusty one. And maybe I did buy a really rusty one. But um, yeah, now I, I can see, now that I've saw those two truth bombs side by side and then I skein, I caked them and they caked into gradients. Now I understand that probably what I was looking at, it was, they were all the same, but it is sort of fun to, you know, paw through them and figure out what you want. And then I have this skein, which also did a little bit of a, a gradient thing with itself as well. So I still have no idea what I'm doing with most of these um, spin cycle yarns, but I do like the idea of using them in color work um, and seeing the, the gradient go with them. And now I have two skeins of Truth Bomb. I don't think I'll need more than one though. So um, besides that, I also did some swatching for design work. I had bought this, um, this beautiful flex of rainbow colors, like red, blue, green, purple, pink, um, all in there. Less purple, more pink, red, blue, green. From Ching Fibers, I bought it in probably 2017. It's a 100% non-superwash um, tweed sock. At least it doesn't say it's superwash. I have a sweater's quantity of this, and I was planning on making this into a design for the longest while, like a design that just never um, happened because other things got in the way, which is okay. I'm okay with that. But I thought, I always thought I would combine it with this Plucky Knitters Primo Sport Weight. Um, this is an MCN, turns out. I didn't remember that until I went to swatch. Um, I always thought I would combine it with that. So I decided that in the spirit of sort of making a plan for my 2019 knitting, that I would also think about my, um, my design work as well. So I ended up swatching these two together and I really don't like them together. So that was informative and interesting. And now I know um, I, I'm going to make a design that's just going to be this um, this yarn here, the Ching Fiber Sport Weight uh, Tweed. So it, it um, I think it naturally has black in it and then she uh, over dyed it with speckles and stuff like that. So then that led me down this path of, okay, <laughs> I've got this Plucky Knitters Primo Sport Weight. I don't have enough to make a sweater because I only bought enough to contrast in this other design idea that is now not going to happen. It'll happen, but not with that yarn. Um, so what to do with that? And so, um, I don't know. I, I may, I, I may do some swatching with some of that spin cycle yarn because it is, it does it is a bit heavier, I think, than fingering weight. I think it could hang with this. I think it'll knit in well with this sport weight. Um, I actually think it is a sport weight officially. So I could do that. I don't know, but that's something on my mind. I have, I want to do the design in the tweed first because I think I'm going to do a rift with the plucky knitters, um, a rift on that design. So besides that, you may remember I bought these um, green, Mountain Spinnery Fingering Weight. It's called Lana Two Ply Fine Wool, um, black and white. And the black's a sheepy black. It's so it's got it's really sort of a rich chocolatey brown. And I had been planning to do mitts, which have now been scuttled. I'm not going to do those, or at least I'm not going to do those now. Um, so these two yarns, I bought more. Um, white and black, primarily white, to make a make the design that I was planning to do with that um, tweed combo with the plucky knitters. That's now not going to happen. These will now move in and replace, um, sorry, hair issues, um, will we'll now replace those in that design idea. So I have also swatched for that. 
So yeah, I now have one, two, bought yarn, swatched for that. Um, I think four, four designs in the works for um, for 2018. And that's plenty. I don't need to do a lot of design work. I my design work is driven by by almost by necessity. Like I like to design like because I'm inspired, but also because it's something like I can't find anywhere else. I don't. I'm not into like remaking remaking designs or redoing things silhouettes that are already out there, just in a different yarn or whatever. I want something that's fresh and new and inspiring to me and to you so super excited about that um okay i'm almost done here and i'm just over my 40 minutes so it's perfect besides acquisition for um besides those spin cycle those are new acquisitions and the green mountain spinnery that's new acquisition um both with a plan with a plan so that's the idea awareness of self of process <laughs> awareness awareness <laughs> I also decided to pre-purchase, I know ahead of Vogue Knitting Live, because part of my Vogue Knitting Live purchase, yarn purchasing plans are to, um, in my Make Nine, I had two sweaters that I really wanna make. One is the As If Tea by Shay Johnson, and the other one is White Horse by Caitlin Hunter. Those two designs, um, I don't have yarn for. So I had thought for Vogue Knitting Live, like that's a perfect, thing for me to be looking for besides like I will also be very interested in just looking at yarn for design ideas for new like what inspires me to create something so that those in terms of purchasing that's what I'm planning to do and I I do have a Vogue Knitting live um, 2019 video planned I will probably put it out on um, Wednesday night before ahead of Vogue telling you what I'm planning to do, like what my entire plan is. I haven't quite formulated it. It's just vaguely, this is what I think I'm gonna do. Um, so I'll be putting that together. That'll be the next video that'll come out. And then after that, my next big video will be a Vogue Knitting Live review and rehash and recap of um, my experience at Vogue Knitting Live. So, um, the As If Tea, I, it is a Erin Waite sweater that combines with uh, lace weight mohair. I'm not sure I'm going to do Aran weight. I'm not a big fan of Aran weight superwash. Having said that, I do have an Aran weight superwash in my in my Make Nine. Um, I may do DK instead. I I looked at doing two strands of fingering weight held together, and I just didn't find anything that I really liked. Um, so I want to shop. I want to shop at Vogue Knitting Live for, with that in mind. Um, so I'm not going to close the door to DK. I want to look at, there's a Lobby NMA that if she brings in her um, weights besides just the singles, last year all she had was singles. Um, if she has other weights besides the singles base, like the heavier weights, her DKs, or maybe her even a sport weight or um, worsted or Aran, I know the color I want of hers. Um, but um, besides that, I'm going to keep an eye out for others. But I decided to pre-purchase, pre pre ahead of Vogue Knitting Live, some um, mohair so that I wasn't also overwhelmed with choice for mohair. So I got these two Legacy Fiber Arts, very pretty tonal. This one is there. It's called their Cloud Based. I think this one's called Cotton Candy. I don't know why they didn't. Oh wait, there it is. Yes, Cotton Candy. So this this you know sort of mid-range pink color it's a little brighter than I wanted but I think knit the way that it is in that pattern it should be fine it's gonna look a little paler I really wanted they have a really beautiful sort of dusty pink peach color that I really really wanted but um sold out so if I see a dusty dirty peachy like sort of um like my skin tone color I may get that, but I think I can achieve what I'm looking for with one of these. So if I have time, if I if I make time, I I may cake these and, and knit up some swatches of them just so that I can make sure tonally this is gonna match with whatever um, speckly dyed yarn I end up picking up for that teeth. So 
in the works. And last, I got a club color. You may remember if you're a returning viewer that I joined the Laneway Club uh, with Life in the Long Grass. She is an Irish um, indie dyer. And so I got my second color. It's this gorgeous pale green color. It's not, it's a little darker than what you're seeing on screen. Let me just see if I can get it to, yeah. Oh, you can see the content. It's BFL and Shavat blend. So the idea of Laneway is that um, in Ireland, Laneway is a the name of like the narrow sort of ramshackle lane or road to your house. Not really a driveway. It's more than a driveway from what I understand from my Irish brother-in-law who's trying to explain to me <laughs> what a laneway is. Um, so yeah, so Lane, she, um, oh my goodness, her name just went out of my head of what her name is. Anyway, the Andy Dyer of um, Life in the Long Grass created this club where she was dying from plants and things out of her garden and her lane. And she was, di so natural dyed on um, non-superwash bases. So I signed up for a three month club and this is the second game. My first game was alpaca and some wool blend and it came out at pale pink. This one was dyed using dried budlia and red cabbage from our garden on a soft woolly base. Um, and it is a bit more or less about a 400 yard skein. So it's really, really, oh, it's so soft and squishy. I could just imagine this working in like in, into some color work or, or something. So I'm only, I only have one skein, so it's a single skein. Um, but I, as I said, when I received my skein last month, I want to wait till I get all three skeins and um, decide what to do with them when I can see all three together. So I'll do a recap next month when I get all three, when I have my third. And then I, I will need to decide whether I want to um, uh, also join again. I'm not sure. I'll have to figure that out. So last, I just want to share with you a couple podcasts that I have been enjoying the last couple weeks as well. I know I've watched Babel's Travel, I think it's Babel's, Tra Babel's Travel Yarn or Babel's Traveling Yarn. Um, it's Grace O'Neill, she is also Irish. She's, she's located in Limerick, um, Ireland. And um, I've really enjoyed her chattering about her spinning. Spinning is something that I've never learned, but it I'm inspired to perhaps try it at some point. I don't think now is the time. This year is not the year for me to learn spinning. Um, it's something that I've always been interested in. I just thought that it takes a really long time. Both her and Amy Florence of Stranded Dye, Dye Works podcast um, talk about spinning. And Grace really goes into detail about the way she spins. And she spins sweater quantities. So I thought that was really cool. I also recently discovered a fairly new podcaster called The Drunk Knitter. And I was immediately attracted to her because of her title. I'm like, oh, she drinks and knits. That's, I'm, that's very challenging to drink and knit. She's a bit of a stream of consciousness type of um, podcaster. There's not a lot of knitting. She's a knit designer as well, and she's got a lot of secret projects that she can't talk about. So you don't get a lot of knitting content, but you get a lot about just this, you know, about her life and stuff. And that was also something that I wanted to share. I know I talked about um, intending to share what I learned from Vlogmas. That was one of the things I found really freeing about Vlogmas was that I was able to... I felt like it was almost obligatory to just give you chatter on about my life and what goes on outside of my outside of my knitting world, <laughs> which and that was fun and a little bit liberating. Um, and I do, I always struggle with like how much of that are you interested in? I don't really know. I don't really know what. I don't. I I know there's like oversharing and then there's undersharing and trying to strike the balance is something that I find challenging. So. Anyway, um, I respect both of them. Both of those, I am a new subscriber to both of those channels, um, and I ha I, do, I very much enjoy. Um, they're both sort of goofy, silly, <laughs> too. Which maybe that's something I like. I think that might be why I like Amy Florence too. Like she's a bit, 
she's herself. She's so authentic. And I think both of these um, pot, uh, channels are also very authentic people. Um, and there's like a certain bit of charm and cuteness when people are authentically themselves. So anyway, okay, I'm wrapping this up. I hope this wasn't too long for you. Thank you for spending some time with me and for listening to my own stream of consciousness. And uh, if you're a new viewer, this isn't my, I'm not always the stream of consciousness. I'm a little more get to the knitting type um, of podcaster or vlogger. Anyway, thank you so much. I wish you well. Um, my next podcast will be a little Vogue Knitting Live preview of what my intentions are. And then I will have a longer um, video of my recap and sharing sharing my, my purchases with you, if that's your thing. Um, but yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Please comment below if you wish. I read every comment and comment back. Um, follow me on Instagram subscribe if you're if you haven't already like the video all of these things help me get more viewers and um, help get my tiny channel out in front of more eyeballs that's the way youtube's weird algorithms work <laughs> take care bye everyone